Hey guys, today we're going to talk about anti-nutrients in vegetables and other foods. Um, plants don't like to be eaten. Um, they've developed certain defense mechanisms to help them survive over millions of years because they can't run away. And this is to prevent the insects and other predators from consuming them, okay? So let's start off with phytoestrogens, okay? So certain plants like flax and soy um, have these little chemical compounds called phytoestrogens, and they can actually create a little bit of a birth control effect uh, in insects. So for the purpose of surviving, because if you can make sterile all these insects and they won't reproduce, the plant survives. So that's an ingenious strategy. But the problem that I see is not the phytoestrogens that you're gonna buy from the health food store that are good for hot flashes or other health conditions, but the type of soy oil and soy protein isolates that are put out in certain uh, veggie burgers and also even put in baby formulas. We don't know the long-term effects. Uh, also the massive amount of soy oil, which is mostly genetically modified, in your salad dressings, in your foods. Uh, we don't know of the long-term effects of that. All right, moving right along to phytic acid. Phytic acid is another chemical that is an anti-nutrient. It prevents the absorption of many minerals, including zinc, iron, calcium, things like that. Now it is in seeds and nuts, and it's actually in the bran part. Now the thing about phytic acid is that uh, some people take it for health benefits. Let's say for example, um, you have excessive amounts of iron in your body, which is common with men because men and women don't have the ability to get rid of excessive iron. Women do on their cycle, but men don't. So when you build up iron, it creates a lot of problems with um, your heart and the damaging effect of it being um, an oxidant on your body. All right, so phytic acid named IP6, you can look that up, and I actually did a video on that, has the property of being a chelator. It, it binds with certain minerals, specifically iron. So if you have high amounts of iron, it'll pull it out. It also has anti-cancer benefits, and there's other, other benefits as well. So a lot of these compounds have pluses and negatives. Let's move on to lectins. Lectins are certain proteins in plants and they're used as a protective mechanism because what they'll do is they'll break down um, certain parts of our digestive tract and they'll put holes in our gut lining and create leaky gut. That's the simple version. Um, there are nightshades, white potato, soy, brown rice, grains. Now I actually have a link of all the lectin foods rated from high to low and I put that down in the description, but. The problem with lectins is that certain people are sensitive to them and it can aggravate um, inflammation in the body. So if you have an autoimmune condition, you should be avoiding lectins. But the, the vast majority of people do not have a problem with lectins. But for example, um, gluten is a lectin um, and that's in grains. All right, now we have oxalates. Oxalates are chemical compounds and by the way, our body makes them as well, but they also come from foods that can bind with calcium and create crystals and create a lot of uh, problems with kidney stones and even inflammation and arthritis. It can accumulate in different parts of the body. Uh, the highest amount of oxalates is in parsley, then spinach, peanuts, almonds, chocolate. And I put a list down below if you want a rating list of all the foods high in oxalates. Then we have saponins, which basically it's, a, it's like a detergent that will dissolve a cell membrane. And it's another protective mechanism in certain plants, like the nightshades. It's in legumes, amaranth, buckwheat. So as you can see, there's a lot of anti-nutrients in, in the food that we eat. There's also, and I don't even mention this, but there's um, enzyme inhibitors that block the enzyme to help break down protein. You should germinate like the seeds and the nuts, soak them in water overnight. And this is why older cultures and probably your grandparents pickled the foods and fermented foods to decrease the anti-nutrients and increase the nutrient availability of certain foods. So there's a couple things you can do. Number one, if you don't have any problem consuming vegetables and these foods, then eat them. But if you start bloating, um, you may have a condition called SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. 
But to explain SIBO in a thumbnail sketch, it's basically a situation where you have uh, the good bacteria that normally should be in the large intestine now in the small intestine. So when you're eating the vegetables and you're having the fiber go in, it's fermenting in a different place and you're getting a lot of gas and bloating. A couple of things you can do. Uh, if you actually have this condition, you can just cut out your vegetables for a month, increase uh, acidifiers for the stomach, take certain herbal antibiotics like garlic and thyme and oregano, and that will help to eliminate that and also do intermittent fasting. But you may just need to um, change the vegetables you're consuming. Maybe you switch your vegetables from cruciferous vegetables, which a lot of people are sensitive to, to more leafy greens. For example, I uh, can do leafy greens in large amounts, but I can't do broccoli, for example. But it really depends on the individual. When you steam or cook cruciferous vegetables, they're easier to digest. And I also recommend rotating the form of vegetables that you're consuming. For example, some days I will consume just um, green salad, okay? Other days I will consume pickled vegetables without any green salad. At the farmer's market, I found a great source of pickled vegetables and without any sugar, always make sure it doesn't have the sugar in there. And I actually, my system does very, very well on these. So I will do like maybe three or four cups of pickled vegetables per day for a while. And then I'll go back to my leafy greens and then I'll rotate to something else. Now, if you have an autoimmune condition or some type of arthritis, I would eliminate lectins and see if you do better, okay? Now, if you have kidney stones, I would eliminate oxalates. But the cool thing about the ketogenic diet is you're eliminating beans, uh, grains, rice, potato. So you already eliminated a lot of the anti-nutrients just by doing that. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I put some links down below for um, specific information about each one of these. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.